It was really unexpected when we won the House of the Year. Most of the entries are for single houses. It was really nice to see that um, there was a growing appreciation of what an apartment could offer. A very special and unique project was we've taken a, um, a generic apartment and we've turned it into something very special. A different way of living um, to what people normally expect in Australia. It was showing a greater appreciation of the future of apartment living. The clients were really great and really inspiring and really fun to work with. And we really got to know them very well. We got to know how they lived and how they wanted to live and we tried to incorporate that into the way we designed the project. Lovely clients who were downsizing from a large house which was approximately five times larger than this apartment with very specific requirements um, and some of them were artwork, had an extensive collection of Australian art, about 20 to 30 pieces. Um, and they had a rather formal lifestyle where they used to live. They had a space to do everything, uh, for example, a separate dining room, a separate change room, a separate sort of living space. With an apartment with a limited amount of space, it was very hard to give them a sense of open plan, but at the same time, give them that sort of sense of compartmentalisation that they were used to in their old house. The actual um, building was a 1970s building, so it had quite strong bones and quite strong angles in um, its proportions and so forth. So we wanted to have a, a bit of a, a hint at that past and the existing building. When we first visited the apartment with our client, it was in the morning, given that the apartment faced northeast, the amount of sun which came into the apartment. The space was so glary, people actually had to um, put sunglasses on. But that was a, a, another reason why we wanted to use a material which basically wasn't just a typical white interior. Because it was such a, a bright, open apartment and it was quite glary, um, we wanted to choose a material um, that would soften the light and also um, be consistent throughout the space. So we've used it on the floor, the ceilings, and all the joinery. So we chose, um, this is an American oak timber, which is quite a nice, um, a, a light colored timber. We didn't want it to be too contrasted to the external coloring. We wanted a, a very, very singular experience, not too many different types of materials. The space is really seen as a backdrop. The artwork is really seen as the main thing in the space. I mean, we normally associate art being in white spaces, in you know, sort of white abstract spaces. The client didn't want to live in an art gallery. They wanted to live with their artwork around them, but not in an art gallery. So we thought having that sort of uh, timber on the walls and the floors and the ceiling was the right way of looking at the space and the right way of imagining the artwork within the space. We took a, an inventory of their artwork and we worked out that um, there wasn't enough wall space in the apartment. Um, so that was a, a problem, it started out as a problem. What it did for us is that we had to look at the space um, creatively and so the artwork took on an active role in, in how we conceptualise uh, the apartment. So what we did is that we created a, sense, uh, an, a series of cabinets or joinery items which occupied the periphery of the space. There was a number of sliding panels within each joinery item and we started layering those sliding panels. And the way we looked at the joinery item was um, we sort of imagined them as a series of sliding panels and, uh, and, a, and a series of hinge panels. And by layering the sliding panels and hinge panels we can actually start. And as the sliding panels slid across each other or pull past each other and as the, um, the panel hinged open, um, they reveal uh, another layer of artwork and another layer of artwork. And what was really nice about that is that our clients can then basically basically become curators of, of their own artwork, of their own space. And um, I think you know that's what was so special about about the design. We actually went to their, their large um, family house that they lived in
prior to this and we measured up every um, artwork and we did a, a full inventory and drew up every um, painting they had and laid it out on, on the walls. Um, so we, we actually um, did options for how different pieces can fit in different places. We really um, went into quite a lot of detail to see how that could all fit. There was a precedence was very, very important for this project, which was a building or interior uh, designed by Sir John Soane. He was faced with a very, very similar problem. He had a, a small sort of infill or terrace house to work with. He was the first architect to develop this way of layering artwork, uh, layering paintings. So it, there was uh, his house, which we were, you know, we're you know, very inspired by. And it's something which we also showed the client, and, and the client was um, very inspired by um, what he had done uh, back in the um, the 1800s, the late 1800s. It was quite uh, groundbreaking, that building. We were looking at the uh, foyer of the building, which was very much a generic, bland space. So each apartment has their own foyer on a floor because each apartment is a whole floor. Um, and we thought that there was very little we could do with that foyer. We came up with the idea of engaging an artist and we, um, saw the work of a young Australian artist from um, Victoria called Esther Stewart and she was um, very unknown at the time but we saw one of her paintings in a local gallery and we really liked the colours and the shapes she used in her work and we thought that that could suit the age and the geometry of the building. We got her on board and she was very enthusiastic about um, doing the artwork and so she did this wonderful mural on the floors, walls and the ceiling of the foyer space, which really gives you a bit of a surprise once you come out of the lift on this floor. The bathrooms were a bit of fun um, and it was the client's idea to um, have a bit of surprise in the powder room in particular. So when they had guests over, they, they would go to the bathroom and get this bit of a shock uh, of what's in there um, and we looked at quite a few different options for that so at one stage we were thinking of quite a strong colour in there but we ended up with um, a fully mirrored um, powder room so um, and the, the mirrors are actually curved so when you go in there it disforms <laughs> your body so the client thought it was quite um, fun which it turned out to be um, if somebody had had a few drinks and then go into the bathroom, they get the distortion of the mirrors. The rest of, uh, the, rest of the interior is very, very singular, very, very monochromatic and we wanted the, um, the bathrooms to be surprises, almost like circuit breakers within the space. So we imagine, for example, the powder room lined with um, mirrors, uh, with curved corners. We, we met the mirrors around the corners. Another bathroom in, in a baby pink, uh, Corian, and the other bathroom in a baby blue colour. But that was something, we, it's really a collaboration with the client. The client wanted something which was uh, quite special and quite playful. A talking point if, uh, when, when her guests came over and when they have gatherings or dinner parties, uh, in the bathroom she wanted not only just the paintings to be a talking point, but the bathrooms to be a talking point. We've been invited to a few functions here and I remember one of the functions, people were lining up uh, to uh, have a look at the bathroom. So it wasn't a queue to actually go to the bathroom, but it was a queue to basically experience uh, and at all the special experience of the bathroom. So that was uh, quite lovely. The clients have, I think, embraced the space. They, they hold quite a few parties here and they've been able to utilise the different facets of it, the changeable sliding panels and the opening cabinets and so forth to curate the space for the different purposes. Um, so from their day to day, where there's just two of them here, to when they hold a function for 100 people. I think the lasting memory of this um, project is really um, the client and the, the relationship with the client um, and uh, just that the way the client pushed us to put in these playful elements which we probably haven't really incorporated in our work before um, and I think that, that 
is very memorable. It's really nice to come back after uh, the five years since um, it was completed and just seeing how the client has furnished the space and how the, there's a few more artworks on the walls. It's just really nice to see them really living in the space and it looks like they enjoy the space. And they've really made it their own, which is nice. There was a bit of, um, I guess, ambivalence about downsizing uh, from a very, very large house. And um, I, I sort of remember um, uh, one of them saying, well, you know, I'll give it six months and if I don't like it, I'll, I'm moving out. Um, so we're, we're now here in, in uh, six, years, you know, six years later and, and they're still li uh, living here and they're, and they're enjoying the place. So I guess um, it worked for them.